Higher Order Functions Introduction We are often unaware of the number of assumptions we make when we communicate with other people in our native languages. If we told you to count to three, we would expect you to say or think the numbers one, two, and three. We assumed you would know to start with one and end with three. With programming, we're faced with needing to be more explicit with our directions to the computer. Here's how we might tell the computer to count to three. Four, and this is a for statement with let i equal one, i is less than or equal to three, i plus plus, and in the body, console.log i. When we speak to other humans, we share a vocabulary that gives us quick ways to communicate complicated concepts. When we say bake, it calls to mind a familiar subroutine, preheating an oven, putting something into an oven for a set amount of time, and finally, removing it. This allows us to abstract away a lot of the details and communicate key concepts more concisely. Instead of listing all those details, we can say, we baked a cake and still impart all that meaning to you. In programming, we can accomplish abstraction by writing functions. In addition to allowing us to reuse our code, functions help to make clear, readable programs. If you encountered count to three in a program, you might be able to quickly guess what the function did without having to stop and read the function's body. We're also going to learn about another way to add a level of abstraction to our programming, higher order functions. Higher order functions are functions that accept other functions as arguments and or return functions as output. This enables us to build abstractions on their abstractions, just like we hosted a birthday party is an abstraction that may build on the abstraction we made a cake. In summary, using more abstraction in our code allows us to write more modular code, which is easier to read and debug. And we'll move on to the next lesson. Functions as data. JavaScript functions behave like any other data type in the language. We can assign functions to variables, and we can reassign them to new variables. Below, we have an annoyingly long function name that hurts the readability of any code in which it's used. Let's pretend this function does important work and needs to be called repeatedly. It's a const that's read, announce that I am doing important work. What if we wanted to rename this function without sacrificing the source code? We can reassign the function to a variable with a suitably short name. Const busy equals announce that I am doing important work. Busy as a function, this function call barely takes any space. Busy is a variable that holds a reference to our original function. If we could look up the address in memory of busy and the address in memory of announce that I am doing important work, they would point to the same place. Our new busy function can be invoked with parentheses as if it was the name we originally gave our function. Notice how we assign announce that I am doing important work without parentheses as the value to the busy variable. We want to assign the value of the function itself, not the value it returns when invoked. In JavaScript, functions are first-class objects. This means, like other objects you've encountered, JavaScript functions can have properties and methods. Since functions are a type of object, they have properties such as dot .length and dot .name and methods such as toString. You can see more about the methods and properties of functions in the documentation. Functions are special because we can invoke them, but we can still treat them like any other type of data. Let's get some practice doing that. Instructions. We've defined a function with a very long name. Check that two plus two equals four a million times. This function takes a long time to execute. It checks whether two plus two equals four, but it does it a million times, just to be really sure. Create a shorter named variable, is2p2, that will be easier to work with, and assign check that 2 plus 2 equals 4 a million times as its value. 
So right down here, we will const, and they want it to be called is2p2, and it's going to be equal to this right here. I'm going to copy and paste that, and we'll run it. Invoke your is2p2 function. Okay, so right under this, is2p2 as a function. And let's see how that works. Hmm, if we forgot the original name of our function, is there a way we could figure it out? Use is2p2 to console.log the name property of the function we assigned to is2p2. Check out the documentation if you need a hint. So we're going to console.log is2p2.name. Run that. Oh, I wrote s, oops, p2. And that works right there. It reveals the name. Check that 2 plus 2 equals 4 a million times to the next lesson. Functions as a parameter. Since functions can behave like any other type of data in JavaScript, it might not surprise you to learn that we can also pass functions into other functions as a parameter. A higher order function is a function that either accepts functions as a parameter, returns a function, or both. We call the functions that get passed in as parameters and invoke callback functions because they get called during the execution of the higher order function. When we pass a function in as an argument to another function, we don't invoke it. Invoking the function would evaluate to the return value of that function call. With callbacks, we pass in the function itself by typing the function name without parentheses. That would evaluate to the result of calling the function. We wrote a higher order function, time func runtime. It takes in a function as an argument, saves a starting time, invokes the callback function, records the time after the function was called, and returns the time the function took to run by subtracting the starting time from the ending time. This higher order function could be used with any callback function, which makes it a potentially powerful piece of code. We then invoke time func runtime First with the add one to one function, note how we passed in add one to one and did not invoke it. In this example, we invoke time func runtime with an anonymous function that counts backwards from 10. Anonymous functions can be arguments too. Let's get some practice using functions and writing higher order functions. Save a variable time to p2. Assign as its value the result of invoking the time func runtime function with the check that 2 plus 2 equals 4 a million times function. Let's save a variable. So const time to p2 is going to equal time func runtime and we're going to invoke it. And while invoking it, we're going to pass it another function, and that's going to be this function right here that checks that two plus two is four a million times. And we're going to invoke that as well. If I've read this all right, let's give it a shot. Oh, I see what they want. Okay, they don't want this one invoked like they were saying before. It shouldn't be invoked here because we don't want to pass the value uh, they just invoked it themselves here, so that made it a little confusing. So let's uh, go ahead and run that. That works, okay. Write a higher order function, check consistent output. This function should have two parameters, a function and a value. It should call the argument function with the value two times. If the callback function produces the same result twice, it should return the result of the function call. Otherwise, it should return the string. This function returned inconsistent results. We're going to write a higher order function. 
So const, it's going to be called check consistent. You know what? I'm going to paste this in because they really don't like when you miss anything. Check consistent output. This function should have two parameters, a function and a value. So we'll say func and val. And we'll just uh, we'll make it a fat arrow function. It should call the argument function with the value two times. If the callback function produces the same result twice, it should return the result of the function call. Otherwise, it should return the string, this function returned inconsistent results. All right, let's take a look at how to do that. So we're going to run this function twice with the same value. So let's, uh, I think we need to hold the variables. Let's see, const uh, run one, uh, you know, let's do that with let, let run one and let run two. Now what I want to do, it's going to be equal to the function with the value. And we're doing this twice, so we'll do the same thing again. Func with the value. Then after that, if run one triple equals run two, it should return the result of the function. Uh, okay, so then we could just return uh, run one would be just fine. And we'll do an else. And there we're going to do our, was it a console log? No, it needs to return a string. So return a string and that says, uh, let's copy it. It'll say, this function returned inconsistent results. Let's try this out and see if it works. That did work, great. Three, invoke your check consistent output with the add to function we wrote and a number as arguments. Okay, so now we're going to invoke the function that we just made. So we'll say check consistent. I'm going to copy these a little bit more because that seems to be what gives us the most errors is small typos here. So invoke your check consistent output and that's invoked with the add to, that's the function that we're going to pass it. And we're also going to take in a number and it could be, I guess, any number, let's say uh, five. That sounds good to me. Let's run that. That works, all right, great. Let's move on to the next lesson. Review, great job. By thinking about functions as data and learning about higher order functions, you've taken important steps in being able to write clean modular code and take advantage of JavaScript's flexibility. Let's review what we learned in this lesson. Abstraction allows us to write complicated code in a way that's easy to reuse, debug, and understand for human readers. We can work with functions the same way we would any other type of data, including reassigning them to new variables. JavaScript functions are first-class objects, so they have properties and methods like any object. Functions can be passed into other functions as parameters. A higher order function is a function that either accepts functions as a parameter, returns a function, or both. Let's see what's up next. And next we have iterators.